Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Carla Coates, and I'm a radiological emergency preparedness planner who's responsible for GIS within the Minnesota Department of Public Safety uh, Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. So my agency is the one that runs the State Emergency Operations Center. So during emergency events like the COVID-19 pandemic, I can wear a lot of different hats in our emergency operations center. But for this one, my main responsibility um, has been to collaborate with our partners to develop GIS products and applications. So today we'll be talking specifically about the State Emergency Operations Center um, GIS response. Because of the scale of the pandemic, there are um, some other groups who are also working on GIS pandemic projects outside of the SVOC. So in terms of solutions, um, so far we've built everything on the ESRI platform and all of our dashboard surveys and web apps are hosted um, on ArcGIS Online. And we also use what's called WebEOC to manage our emergency events. Um, this is available statewide to all of our counties. And we're able to embed many of our GIS applications within it, which makes it even easier for our partners to access the information. So a little bit about the progression of the SEOC GIS involvement in the pandemic. Um, Right away, we started pumping out static maps and just simple GIS applications. And then fairly early on, we started working closely with various pandemic work groups. And these were made up of people coming together from different agencies. And we were working on ways that we could use GIS to manage, analyze, and display data in faster, more meaningful ways. So some of these agencies include, of course, the Minnesota Department of Health, the Department of Natural Resources, uh, various governors groups, Minnesota Management and Budget, and the National Guard, along with um, a lot of other people and agencies. Um, so that's just to name a few. So three of those work groups that I've personally worked with are fatality management, long-term long care facility testing, and community testing. So because of the pandemic, all of the meetings that I've been involved in so far have been virtual. So we've done everything virtually. Um, and we've moved through the entire process uh, with calls, emails, and demonstrations. And throughout this event, due to the speed at which we're operating, all of our requirements have been gathered very informally. So it's been a totally iterative process, and we've really, truly built the applications as we went. So with that, I'm going to throw it over to Dan Falbo from Esri. Okay, thanks, Carla. Um, I, I just thought maybe to start this thing off, we might just talk about how the information flow has worked up to this point here for the COVID-19 response. Again, I'm Dan Falbo from Esri, and I've been supporting the work done at the state. Um, I was actually invited to join the EOC team back in March. And my major role has been uh, really threefold. Number one was is to help organize the requests as they were coming in, which were, were quite a few at the time. And then to also facilitate and organize the information products that were, were being requested. Um, and the third role, I guess, was is to bring in some ESRI technical support issues. As we, as we just began to configure applications, we needed something to be done. I, uh, we would sort of do staff augmentation to kind of help run over some widgets or, or, or workflows, et cetera. To understand what was going on, I think it's important from this slide to understand how COVID was treated. Number one, if you take a look at, at this slide, all information related to COVID goes into the Department of Health. That was all of the case, hospitalization, et cetera. This information was fed into multiple different systems. Uh, it started out going into red cap. It, it has now migrated into two other systems, one to deal with um, with um, the epidemiological stuff that's found in something called meds, the med system, and which is the Minnesota Electronic Disease Surveillance System. And the other one was called MinTrack, which was uh, tracking resources, primarily PPE, et cetera, as it related to um, getting um, uh, resources out. When that came in, it immediately went down to an executive team that was run by the governor's office. And as you can see in there, there are a number of different groups that were playing a role in here. Um, very, very diverse, including um, people from labor and industry, education, 
public safety, et cetera, uh, since it was a far reaching and a holistic uh, um, pandemic here. Once they, they had taken a look at the data, requests were then made back to essentially two groups. Um, by the way, the ICS was implemented here. Joe Kelly kind of ran it from the HSEM side. We were responsible for building out information products that utilized GIS, either applications or mapping. A lot of the data analysis was actually being done by the data team at the Office of uh, Management and Budget at State of Minnesota, which has a very large group of people who do that type of analysis. We worked closely with them as we changed, exchanged variables, et cetera, et cetera, back and forth. And then on the right-hand side, you can see, um, because of that, we began to build a whole series of different products that uh, again, were being produced almost seven days a week from March up until May, um, as the requests came in, there were, there were um, quite a few of them. So with that, I think I'll toss it back to you, Carla, so we can kind of talk a little bit more detail about what the, what the products were Great. that we actually made. Great. Thanks, Dan. So as Dan said, um, we got a lot of different types of requests, and these are just some examples. Um, some are based on situational awareness. Some they just wanted static maps. Some, some wanted mobile solutions. Um, other requests came in for... Um, building things that would provide the public with good information and executive level information, et cetera. So this slide shows some other applications that were developed, um, including, like I was saying, um, some mobile applications and dashboards. And then next we'll take a deeper look at three applications. Um, one is for fatality management, which you can see on the, the screenshot on the lower right-hand side of the screen. Um, another one was for long-term care facility testing, um, which is on the lower left-hand side of the screen. That's an internal application only. And then third, and I don't have a graphic for it on this slide, but we've got community testing that I've been working on, an internal application, um, which is currently under development, but we'll take a, we'll take a quick look at that. So fatality management. Um, Early on in the pandemic, a fatality management work group was created. So that runs out of the state EOC and is led by the Minnesota Department of Health. So its members include uh, Department of Health divisions such as mortuary science and virtual records. Um, it includes funeral home directors, medical examiners, offices, local, tribal, and state emergency management and public health officials are also involved in that group. Um, because models were indicating early on that cold storage within our state could quickly become overwhelmed, um, we wanted to lean forward and build out a system comprised of surveys to collect situational awareness data, as well as operations dashboards for turning data into useful information for vetted users. So currently, um, we're in the process of building out some more interactive applications for internal staff to use. Um, on the left, you'll see a screenshot of a survey that we built using um, Survey123. So this is currently being sent out to crematories, funeral homes, and medical examiners' offices on a regular basis. And the focus of that particular survey is to compile status information on their cold storage capacity as well as their supply levels. So to keep things as simple as possible for the end user, we use some conditional formatting within the questions, so they would only see certain questions based on how they answered a previous question. So this particular information is dynamically joined to a point layer of morgues in ArcGIS Online, and then that's displayed, that updated information is displayed on the dashboard you see on the right hand of the screen as soon as it's entered. So most of the dashboard that you're looking at um, has been hands-off since we launched it. So everything, most things are dynamically updated. So on that dashboard, this fatality management work group decided that they wanted a one-stop shop for a lot of information that needed to be presented in different ways. So there's actually a lot more information available than what the screenshot shows. And because we ended up having to stack a lot of different elements. So I'm going to switch over to a quick demo now so you can get a better look at how we built that out. So just bear with me here. Okay, so we're, taking, we're looking at the dashboard right now. So I'll go over how this is, 
how we built this out. So on the left-hand side, um, you can see we've got cold storage capacity information. We've got a map and several cards or elements of information related to cold storage capacity. And then below that, we have information on retort capacity per 24 hours. So a retort is what is used to cremate um, decedents. So, and then that same similar information is available that people can click through the card. So this data is really baseline data that was collected by uh, the Minnesota Department of Health back in April of this year. So this, this, this information doesn't, doesn't change on a daily basis at all. Um, but you can see we've got a lot of different types of information that people have access to related to that baseline information. Um, sort of in the middle here, we actually added a, um, a section to give people information on how to use the dashboard because there was so much going on. Um, so we included information on how to interact with different map elements and, you know, how you could interact with the other, other elements in the dashboard, like lists, bars, charts, et cetera. So the right-hand side of the dashboard is all dynamically driven data. So if we look at the top, we've got all-cause mortality death as registered with vital records at the Minnesota Department of Health. So this is updated by a survey um, that, that vital records fills out every morning. Um, so that's updated daily. And then we also have information on just case COVID cases and deaths, and that's automatically fed in. Uh, and then below that, we have information on ventilator status by MDH region. So we have capacity and availability. And then if we click through, we also have information on critical care beds, um, capacity and availability by MDH region. Um, below that, and then to the right, this is what that survey that um, was on the previous slide, that's what that, the information that the funeral homes, crematories, and medical examiners fill out, that's what feeds these three windows here. Um, so we've got information on supply status, um, sorted by date reported. Um, so this is medical examiners, they're reporting that they've got sufficient human remains pouches as of yesterday. And then we can click through here. We have supply status, funeral homes. And then we can also break it down into individual types of um, PPE. And, that. and then on the right-hand side, we have cold storage status information. This map is fully interactive, so you can zoom in. And as we zoom in, we have more information that becomes available. You can click on something, and you can see that not all funeral homes and crematories are reporting every on a weekly basis, but we're working on that. Um, for a long time, that really wasn't an issue because everything was pretty status quo. Everybody was, was able to maintain operations pretty well. So if we look below here, we can see our cold storage status um, by medical examiner as of December 8th, Hennepin County had a total of 56 spaces and they had 16 available. So, and we can click on the, and zoom right to it if we wanna see where it is. And then flipping through the cards, we can see all reporting funeral homes and crematories by county. So if I wanted to see all of them that have reported out since the spring in Anoka County, these are the three that have reported, or actually four that have reported. Medical examiners again, tribal nations, we can zoom into tribal nation area. We want to see what's around them and so on. All right, so we'll go back to our PowerPoint presentation. There we go. Okay, 
And next, we'll move on to another set of applications that the FCC built to tackle long-term care facility testing. So early on, um, SCOC GIS was approached by the long-term care facility testing team, which was working out of the SCOC and was led by the Minnesota Department of Health, along with the Minnesota National Guard. So they were tasked with developing and managing uh, the entire COVID-19 testing system for long-term care facilities within our state. So this entailed things like contacting and working with each facility, scheduling teams to administer three different sets of tests over a three-week period, ordering and distributing the test kits, getting the test kits to the appropriate labs, et cetera. So they started out managing most of their data in spreadsheets, and they asked me if I would build a simple web app for them to just simply keep track of their testing status of each long-term care facility in the state. And so we did that. And then they found out that those spreadsheets um, became unwieldy pretty quickly and they weren't very user friendly. So they came back and said, hey, can you build us out a comprehensive system that would be, you know, we can use to manage the whole program. So this entire system that you're looking at on the screen um, was designed in collaboration with the National Guard. I worked with a really brilliant person on this whole project. So all in all, we ended up with a data layer with about 60 different fields of information that they were filling out. Um, I built out six different editing applications, and each had different levels of editing permissions. So the one that you can see on the left hand of the screen was built for the administrators of the group within the SDLC. So they had full editing rights to everything. Um, another editor that I built out was specifically for the testing teams to use uh, mobily out in the field. And then another one was built out for the labs, the um, that were analyzing the test so they could edit out their information. So along with the various editors, um, we built out a leadership dashboard, which you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. And one thing I like about this particular dashboard is really its simplicity. So unlike the fatality management dashboard that we looked at um, earlier, which was jam-packed with information, the long-term care facility testing group really wanted leadership to be able to look at it and quickly see what was going on without having to interact with it at all if they didn't want to. So next we'll move on to an internal application that I'm currently working on, which is community testing. So we'll go there. So a while back, Minnesota started a statewide program to provide barrier-free COVID testing for everyone. So um, this includes in-person nasal swab testing as well as mail order do at home saliva testing. So right now I'm in the process of developing a series of applications for them that, like I said, will be used internally. Um, these internal applications are important to this group for planning, scheduling, and situational awareness. And just to note that Mingeo is under contract to build out the public facing part of the website and they're working on that right now. So, and note that what you're seeing right now was built using test data, so this isn't actually real data. Um, so the basic functionality that they wanted in this initial application that you see on the screen um, is pretty much done. They wanted in their internal users to be able to quickly see what sites have testing available today, as well as those that have events scheduled in the future. So at this scale, um, any testing site that is open today shows up on the map with a green circle underneath that site marker. So you can, I don't know if you can see it, but this one, this particular site, if it was real data, would be open today. They also wanted to be able to type in an address or drop a pin to the distance and get a listing of upcoming in-person test sites and information related to each testing event. So, and then we set it up so these testing labels depend, change depending on their status. So you can see this green one that, that, if it were real data, would be open today. It says nasal swab testing today, weather permitting. These other two sites have um, tests scheduled in the future, and they indicate what type of testing. This is nasal swab testing, future date scheduled. So a user can choose a testing event from the drop-down list on the right, or they can select a site on the map for detailed information. 
And then if they'd like, they can easily get driving directions to that site. So now that that basic functionality is done, we're in the process of adding some additional tools and data layers for them to make it even more useful. So this team is interested in having some other internal community, community testing apps developed for them that will allow them to drill down even further into their data and then provide more information at the leadership level. And those are kind of in the initial requirements phase right now. So we've talked about a couple of the applications that we've built so far, and I'm going to toss it back over to Dan, and he's going to talk a little bit about where we're heading with GIS technology. So, Dan. Okay, th thanks, Carla. Um, so as Carla's been working this, we've been organizing this, and Carla's been working on these specific applications about the March time, or no, not March, May time frame, May, June time frame. We, uh, at the request of all the people who are participating in here, we decided that we needed some type of a repository um, to search for data quickly, primarily data, both local data, state data, federal data, et cetera. So we, I was in charge of sort of organizing what was coming from CDC, HHS, other states, et cetera. And so we, we built out a very quick hub-esque kind of a, of a platform here for which uh, was organized around multiple different topics here, data, um, resources from healthcare to community and business, et cetera, population demographics. We were looking at social vulnerability indexes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and so that was available for us to be able to put into applications or through simple viewers for, for our, our constituents or our end users to use. Next slide, Carla. Um, but what's happened now, though, is, is once we got that kind of set up, we've now got uh, the support from Department of Public Safety to begin to build out a, a, what we're just calling the, the state of Minnesota geospatial hub that will be dealing with um, COVID related, originally COVID related applications, but will then also um, transcend into other applications that we hope will continue to be used, certainly within DPS, but also within the Department of uh, of health and also places like MMB as we try to build better and tighter integration with their analytics team. So what we're at right now is um, in the, as we start in phase one of the second type of geospatial hub is we're currently um, scoping out ways of which we will connect up all of the state agencies um, together to be able to much faster collaborate. And what we're talking about in this is that we're gonna be focusing in on initiatives and frameworks, again, to deal with this uh, integration um, as it relates to COVID, um, but also seeing the need to be able to talk directly to um, and, and collaborate with places like DEED, Department of, or Department of Employment and Economic uh, Development, the Minnesota Department of Revenue, Department of Education, et cetera. And again, the one major thrust of all of this is was our mantra of what we wanna do is we wanna be able to communicate, coordinate and collaborate um, in a dynamic sense. So this is using a technology from Esri called Hub Premium. So as we're working on this, and we'll show you uh, that work in just a second, but I do want to sensitize you to where, we, where we've got the buy-in now to go to phase two. And what we're looking at is building a partner collaboration in real time using this technology to one, to have a dynamic relationship with all of our local governments that would include all of our counties, both from an emergency management and a health perspective, but also um, with tribal governments, et cetera. Um, and then we're also um, building ties into our research partners, such as the Mayo Clinic and the University of Minnesota and all of the hospitals. Uh, we also uh, already have some connections in with our NGOs or non-government organizations who are able to deal with, with um, uh, populations, vulnerable populations, and also beginning to scope out other partnerships that we may or may not be able to have. And this could include uh, groups such as the GAC, groups that, that you're participating in, et cetera, et cetera. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, uh, apologize for my dogs, uh, but uh, I want to turn it over to Chad here so he can give, do you, uh, give you a, a, a sneak preview of what we're working on. All right. Thank you, Carla and Dan. Um, good afternoon, 
My name is Chad Hansen, and I work at Homeland, Homeland Security and Emergency Management, where I provide administrative support for WebEOC and GIS in the state EO or the state EOC or the State Emergency Operations Center. Um, so today, you've had the opportunity to see a variety of proje projects that we've been developed or have that have been developed during the COVID pandemic. Um, also, the COVID the COVID pandemic unfolded across the world and altered the way everyone lives. However, with that, it sparked new ways of doing business, technology, and collaboration among people that has been seen or implemented at such a large scale. The main thing to note during the COVID pandemic is that it has become one of the largest collaboration events in, the, in history. The collaboration at the state of Minnesota involved many state agencies, local and federal health agencies, business partners, non-government agencies, emergency management, and other partners where the end goal is to communicate, coordinate, and collaborate. So the question that comes in mind is where can all this data information, dashboards, and mapping applications reside for individuals, communities, organizations, and teams to access all this data? And the, and the answer to that is the hub. So what is the hub? And Carla, if you want to share my screen. Yep, hold on. Let me, I'll stop sharing. Stop sharing. All right, Chad, you should be good to go. All right, can you see my screen? Um, yep. Okay. So the hub, so what is the hub? The hub provides the ability to increase engagement and collaboration within the community that can range from individuals working on internal projects to the public having access to pandemic information. It provides the framework to organize people, data, technology into a system that provides the ability to improve decision-making and service delivery. The hub can also be built out in a variety of different ways to help enhance the experience and improve data sharing. Let's look at the hub that we built out so you can quickly, and you can see it quickly provides statistical information on COVID and the ability to interact with mobile the mobile dashboards. So you can see right here that you can you can see the confirmed cases, the release from isolation, the deceased information from today. You can also see that it has the mobile application in here where you can actually look at uh, the case information, zoom in, you could look at a county if you wanted to and click on it and see what the case numbers is. You can also look at, there's a variety of different tabs on the bottom, but the nice thing is you can actually click on them as you go, but one nice one is the age. You can see the distribution of age information. Um, it also provides you to the ability to host hubs within a hub. The, the hub also provides the, abil <clears throat> the ability to interact with dashboard maps that link to county and tribal and community health sites. So as you can see here, um, I've scrolled through already just to kind of preset it, but you can actually click on, like, if you wanted to see Dakota County, you could zoom into Dakota County, click on it, and then you can access their their actual health website. If you wanted to look at a county or, tri or an, a tribal entity, you could click on Prairie Island, for instance, zoom in, click on their entity, and then you can actually access their their information. It also provides the ability to the users to interact with, um, sorry, one second. It also incorporates and shares press conference videos, messages and the, to the public and social media. As you can see here, we have various uh, YouTube videos that have been pushed out as press conference videos, but you also see that we have the Department of Public Safety Twitter feed, and we also have the uh, Department of Health Twitter feed. You can scroll through here and easily access information and link to whatever you need to link to. Now in the world, now in the GIS world, the da data is essential and without it, it wouldn't be able to share applications and maps from state and regional or national resources. And the hub allows you to do that. As you can see here, you can see a variety of different state and county uh, applications that are out here, and then a variety of different national GIS applications that are out there. 
that you can actually ask, access, such as Johns Hopkins or the surveillance by the University of Virginia. Um, now, I mentioned previously that the hub, the hub allows you to have hubs within a hub. Um, I'm going to scroll back up here. And just to let you know, I've already preloaded them for any internet uh, cap or in inaccuracies. Um, but the first one that we will, we will look at is the Department of Health. Um, so you can actually just click on this and then it would pop up. And here you can see the hub provides the ability to create unlimited different kinds of websites and web pages that can pull on existing information, such as the COVID re response site, where you can actually access anything else in here. You can see the statistics. You can look at the, the dashboards and everything like that. It also provides links and additional health applications and resources that you can access at a regional and federal level. Um, now, going back to it, if I wanted to click on the Department of Public Safety, that would open up the Department of Public Safety hub. And that provides you to share information from the governor's site, such as executive orders that have been pushed out. And it's a fully interactive way where you can actually look at the administration, you've got the COVID response, the build one, contact information. It also provides um, emergency ma management applications such as WebEOC or HISN if you're looking for any information for that. You can also access uh, survey information that have been built up for applications or other social media mapping applications and a variety of different public safety applications that can help for protective measures and, and stuff like that. The nice thing about it is it has a, you can have a unified um, layout for the entire application, but each entire hub can be set up completely different to be specific for that agency. Um, in summary, the hub is a collaborate, collaboration bridge between your organization and the community it serves to a one-stop shop that provides work, data, mapping applications, and information to entire communities. Now I'll hand it back to uh, Carla and Dan. Yep. All right, Chad, if you want to stop sharing your screen, I'll yep. take over again. All right, can everybody see that? Yep. And then I think Dan will hand it over to you. No, okay, to yeah, that, that was a smooth handoff. <laughs> there we go. Great. Um, so, so I guess it just sort of in closing what's next, and I think you saw what we've done for the beginning of, of sort of building out this hub of, of for information sharing. And one of the things I want to kind of couch this in is, is that where we're going in in the next phase is to build a collaboration again of which uh, everybody will be in, or people will be invited to actually participate in these decision making around initiatives or, or, or shared goals of which they will actually have full access to tools, inputs, codes, data, et cetera, et cetera. One other thing I want to just sort of stress is, is, is that there are kind of two different dashboards going on. One public, we've made this kind of bifurcation, one to the public, one behind the firewall. We have done a bunch of work that we can't share with you that goes directly back to the governor's task force. Um, I can just share with you that, the, that in a lot of these analysis, it's multi-state uh, uh, type analysis, particularly around uh, edges of, of the state, um, and also other things that, that need to be uh, held in confidence. So we do have two kind of initiatives going on at the same time. So what, what's, what's our goals? Um, we as a team, and again, we've had people working on this group that I've been part of that are from health, DPS, um, PCA, uh, MMB, uh, uh, DNR, et cetera. So our idea is to build bridges to these other state departments and also to local governments and partners, as I had mentioned earlier. That's in the first bullet. The second thing, though, is, is that we really and more specifically want to build a user community in the health and public safety um, realm. These include professionals not only within government, but within the universities and research communities. So we feel that we can now have a true collaboration around a GIS 
um, a spatial um, perspective. So um, we hope to, to solicit a number of the people who are on this call as this gets developed out and that you'll uh, participate with us. We also want to begin to, or what we're working at is to be in the develop tighter integration with other business technology. And what do I mean by that? Well, as, as you who are consumers in the county government have realized that the data coming out of these business systems at Department of Health have been um, at times a little bit um, sporadic and or uh, the schemas continue to change. We've been working on that as best as we can, but we want to be able to have this be transparent through program, programmatic offerings such that this data will be easily um, standardized and then distributed out. And also we want to build into uh, into other business systems, such as uh, Chad had mentioned earlier from the emergency management standpoint, things like mass notification systems, web EOC, um, et cetera. Uh, we also then want to also emphasize um, to the community as sort of an outreach thing that GIS and spatial in information is important part of uh, understanding business problems. One of the things we found out, one of the lessons we've learned a lot is that requests were made but, but the context for which those um, requests were made were not often developed. So we spent a lot of time saying we needed to have this happen, X, we wanted to have X happen, but we had to go out there and find the context for which X was happening. So we had to do a lot of demographic, economic, um, transportation related. We had to find out where schools, where businesses were, food deserts, et cetera. So we want to sort of build this platform where all of these available data, hybrid data in many cases coming in from places like the city of St. Paul or Ramsey County could be incorporated to solve certain issues. And then finally, we want to just build out this on a whole new infrastructure. Um, what we found out within the state um, is, is that both the public health and emergency management are sort of running in a non-services based environment and we've definitely shown them the value through our application development and ability to get information products out that working towards a services based um, a design helped uh, solve problems in a, in, a, in a very timely manner so those are kind of our five major um, overarching goals going forward and with that i will hand it back to carla great Thank you, Dan. Let me get to the next slide. So, in closing, um, something I'd really like to emphasize um, is that the key ingredients to making what we've done successful were, of course, you know, having the GIS technology, but more importantly, it was really the collaborative um, spirit and dedication that everyone in these work groups have had. So, I really can't emphasize this enough. We've had to. Um, come to the table and work together in ways that we've never had to do before. And I think we all agree that the relationships we've built and will continue to build as, as we move forward with this pandemic will make us all better prepared as we move forward and face new challenges that go way above and beyond the COVID-19 pandemic. So on behalf of our entire multi-agency team, um, I'd like to thank you all for inviting us to talk today. So with that, um, are there any questions? Uh, hey, Carla, I'd like to say one thing too. Um, oh yeah, Chad, go um, ahead. Um, you know, the one thing that was really interesting, you know, I'm a, I'm I'm newer to HSEM. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a young buck, um, but you know, the interesting thing with dealing with COVID and everything, and then actually having multiple incidents and the and things going on at the time, such as. Um, some of the civil unrest and everything that was going on. It was, you know, it, it was very interesting to learn how we can all really start working together. And I think that was another point of like the whole point of getting into the, the point of like collaboration with everybody. I'm like, it, it, you know, it's, at times you can't always do it because you're told not to. But I think that's the, the biggest thing that we, everybody needs to remember is um, the more you can collaborate, the better you're going to be able to do on things. So. Great. Thanks, Chad. Uh, Carla, Chad, Dan, that was an excellent mm -hmm. presentation. We really appreciate you um, sharing with us all this hard work that's gone on. And I'm certain that there's uh, some questions out there. So I'll, I'll shut up and let them come forward. <laughs> okay.
Hey, this is Randy. Um, hey, yeah, Randy. Thanks, th thanks for that, Carla. Thanks for all that. You know, it, it's uh, you know, maybe Chad being a young buck that he is and new to the, <laughs> new, new to HSCM. Um, you know, this this is um, really a whole new approach for HSCM. Yeah, it Talking really about is collaboration. Not to mention just embracing GIS, and it's really something that you know I've I've really found frustrating and disheartening in the past. Um, and because you know, emergency management tends to be pretty hierarchical, you know, the county yep. emergency managers take their cues from the state, the city emergency managers take their cues from the county, and and so on. And um, and, and that's fine, you know, because that's really how the funding works. And that's how, I mean, that's, some, that, that, that's really just the way emergency management works. You know, cities exhaust their resources, they turn to the county. County exhausts their resources, they turn to the state to go find other things in mutual aid and all that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the kind of stuff that you're talking about with the, you know, the collaboration and, and so on, really using, almost using GIS as the, the foundation of that collaboration and the example of the collaboration. Yeah. It's great. It, it, it really is. What, what I'm wondering is, you know, how is that being embraced across the HSCM organization? And um, how is that kind of an approach being shared or conveyed, you know, down that chain of command, so to speak, to county emergency managers, city emergency managers, the emergency management community in general? Good question. So um, how is that being embraced um, across the HSBM organization? I would say it's, it's being, actually being very well embraced. Um, yeah. I think because of the, the vast scale of this pandemic, like I said in my closing remarks, it's just, it's forced everybody to dig deep. I mean, everybody yeah, has had care. to really dig in deep. And I think that that's been, you know, in all of this all of the awful things that have been going on with the pandemic, I really feel like that's been the silver lining for, for everybody. And I think as, as we build out more applications and we provide people with more tools to use their, you know, to turn their data into useful information, I think that just grows because then they see, oh, hey, they've done this. I wonder if we can do this. You know, that's how some of these things kind of evolved was we started out small or we started out with one application and it's, you know, then another group saw that and they're like, Hey, well, if we can do this, maybe we can do this, you know? Yeah. So it's just kind of grown. So I'm, we're really pushing to um, keep the momentum going beyond COVID-19, which is why this hub really um, is really important to us just building out this hub. Um, because well, and, I, and I think we the, can collaboration, get that. the collaboration with Stacy Stark too, you know, with what she's doing. Yeah. That's great. You know, it, it kind of yep. always, you always, you know, because there's, a, there's kind of this inherent hierarchy of emergency management, you know, I think that there was also this attitude that, you know, we will tell you how to do these things as opposed to yeah. embracing more of a collaborative arrangement. So I think, you know, Stacy's project is a great example and I'm glad you guys have embraced it. Um, yeah, that, we're really excited really about that. That's great. Yeah, we're really excited to be working with Stacy and the group on that. Right. And, and, you know, and, we can't do it alone. Like none of us can do this alone. I mean, we're all we're all in this together. So it, it just makes sense. It makes sense to collaborate. Well, nice work. You know, whatever, you, whatever you've done to 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 stimulate that collaborative um, <laughs> uh, attitude, you know, nice 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 work. You know, the one thing Great. I'd like Thanks, to say Randy. too. The one thing I'd like to say is like you know I was in the EOC. Um, pretty much like right away when everything kind of kicked off, I was there like every day. Um, you know, working with the leadership, um, they don't know what they don't know. Um, right. So working with planning and ops, they would tell me something that was going on. So I would automatically talk to Carla and then we would start just building something out. And, you know, with, with people that don't know about GIS and some of the aspects and stuff that you can do with it um, and make it s simplify information, um, we'd build some stuff out and we'd send it to him like, Hey, here's a map. And he goes, Wow, this is exactly what I was looking for. Um, and he goes, can you, but it wasn't always exactly that big. Can you change this, 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 and this. And I'm like, yes, but yeah, they, at least they got a product that they could see. And I think that was the big thing for some of them. Cause 
you know, like they're they're in they they're busy with their own stuff. Right. Um, so like the fact that we can actually do a, f a few things for them, um, just to like visualize the information, I think that was a big key on letting them know that we can, what we can actually do. So that's great. Yeah, and one uh, one thing they haven't really talked about is, uh, you know, these COVID dashboards. Uh, the COVID dashboard has been hit over 30 million times since it was, uh, you know, turned on on March 30th. And, you know, the updates for, you know, Chad updates the COVID numbers every day with, uh, you know, the data sets coming from Department of Health and stuff. And, you know, just that data just that data set there has been hit over 150 million times through ArcGIS online. So I mean, that's gotta be, that's gotta be pretty revealing for other people at the state to see yeah. how something like that gets embraced. I mean, I know that we've seen the same thing yeah. at, at Dakota County with like our property information search, you know, spend a lot of time developing the County website, doing all that stuff. And the number one thing that gets hit is our property information application. Yeah. You know? and, and they just, yeah thought about that you know and it happened more organically it wasn't really asked for so yeah it's it's got to really help highlight the value of gis and the, yeah and the, 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 you know the one thing to remember is like well we were a lot of stuff that we're building out and everything and it's like you know we're kind of at the beck and ha of upper management um but you know we're all willing to actually just sit down dig in and actually get this stuff out for everybody because we all know it's going to be out there for the public or counties and everybody else and like um dealing with the other issues and everything like that but i'm like it's still it's getting out there to everybody so that's the big thing that you know it's providing information to people so that's one nice thing yeah and we we think that moving forward with this hub that's going to even enhance that whole collaborative spirit and collaborative effort even more you know because we're we really want to provide more and you know more even more information and more opportunities to for us all to work together yeah you know that kind of reminds me i'm i don't mean to dominate the no, no. The discussion part here. But, you know, earlier uh, you mentioned the GAC uh, survey. You know, it was kind of interesting. Steve, you sent that out to the uh, to AMEM, you know, and, 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 and here's what happens. So, so there's three people at Dakota County that got that in emergency management, and they forwarded it to me. <laughs> GIS guy. Here, here's, here's a GIS survey. I thought you'd be interested. I went, yeah, yeah, I'm interested, but here's the deal. We really need you to, to respond, you know, but you know, right. that's, that's kind of always been the attitude. It's like, well, that's that GIS stuff. We got a GIS guy. Let's give it to, let's give it to the GIS person, you know? Um, but right. this kind of stuff and the kind of visibility that you're getting and raising the awareness because, because now it's not that they don't know. Now they know. Okay, so right. they know what they don't know. They know what they don't know, and so they just then they know who to ask. And so starting exactly. to understand that they need to engage. That this is something that's useful, not just the technology, but the professional uh, wisdom and organization that we have available uh, to 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 help them. You know, and, and that's yeah, that's I, agree. Cool I totally thing. agree. Yeah, it nice. really is. It's been it's been fantastic. I really, it's been you know, it's of course for all of us, it's been pretty stressful, but it's, it's really been really fantastic. I mean, it's been a really good opportunity for all of us to work together and to really do some good things. All right. Now, Randy hey, said, you want to oh. dom dominate the conversation, but he has. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> Carla, this is Stacy. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Uh, I, Thanks, Randy, for that conversation too. I I agree. It's it's so great to see GIS being the the thing that people are connecting and coordinating around. I think that's going to get us a long ways um, with emergency management. It's it's really exciting, and you guys have done some awesome work. Um, I am wondering, you had, or maybe this was Dan's slide, um, had the University of Minnesota as a partner. And I'm just wondering um, what what de what uh, avenues you're using to reach um, University of Minnesota partners or other non-state agency partners in this kind of work. Um, I I know of some work that I'm involved with, and I'm I would be really interesting to connect it in eventually. 
Um, but I'm wondering if there's other work at the University of Minnesota that's already connected in. Uh, I can answer that, Stacy, a little bit if you don't mind, Carla. What, I'm working yeah. with two two people, and they're within the health metrics side of the fence. So it's health. Everything that at the U right now that we're working with has been COVID related, right? So when they came up with their model, and I and I, I apologize, I can't think of the two guys' names right now, but we've been working with them, and and since they're covered under the site license there they've been they've been monkeying with it so i can share those names with you and i believe they're having another meeting with some health people from esri sometime next week so perhaps if you'd like i can get you into that meeting if you'd like to know um, something that would be great um yeah i'm i'm working on another project and i can i can uh, talk to you about this offline um okay. if if it's not connected in to the same people but um that'd be great if you could connect me Sure. Yeah, we also have had reached out a little bit to places like uh, Rochester to the Mayo Clinic and whatnot. But again, these mm -hmm. things are sort of happening organically around a business problem. So mm -hmm. when people were trying to develop testing and whatnot, we needed to monitor them. We were getting the data on the back end of it. So, you know, we're just trying to figure it out. Right, right. I, I was wondering if any of the uh, wastewater testing um, people have been in touch with the HSEM or ESRI related to these dashboards yet? Nothing, nothing yet. A, a little bit of work going on with Met Council since from, from the metro area here, mm, but that's all, sure. that's, that's all still been somewhat uh, pr uh, preliminary at this stage of the game. Okay. Thanks. I have a question for Carla, if I could, please. Um, actually, mm -hmm. it's two part. First one is um, the data that is, you know, your static things like where are the um, nursing homes or or whatever the case. Did you draw? Where did you draw that data from? Did you pull that directly from <laughs> Minnesota Department of Health, or did you, you know, for this outline yeah. stuff like um, I don't know let's say funeral homes did you pull that from hsip where did how did that where is that from? so yeah good question um so the funeral homes and crematories and medical examiner's offices those came right out of the uh, minnesota department of health um, mortuary science division so they handle yep. i don't know if they handle the licensing but they they have all the got all of that information so i got that from them and then the the, the long-term care facilities, that was kind of a hodgepodge, it started out as a hodgepodge of data that I got from the long-term care facility testing group. And I, to be honest with you, things were moving so fast, I don't even know where they got that data, but that was the data that they were using got it. to manage manage that whole operation. So um, it was, like I said, it was kind of a hodgepodge of about, I don't know, probably five different data sets that had to be reconciled and put together and um, so that is a good question. I'm not sure where exactly that originated from. Okay. Um, and then, but, second... and then they had, they also, oh, I'm sorry. And they also had the ability to like, let's say a facility that they were going to do testing at wasn't in their data set. They had the ability to actually go in and add that, add that point on the map and add the information to it. Okay. okay so the second question is, um, the folks over at the Minnesota Department of Health have published um, online the locations, for instance, for testing sites and mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. I'm curious, can you give us a sense of what they're going to do with regard to the vaccination distribution plan, assuming we hear sometime today that, in fact, uh, we're going to be underway on that? I'm is that right. something? Is that something that's going to be published to the public, or or is it going to be segmented by group, like um, an email push, or just could you give us a feel of what what that's going to look like? You know, I I wish I knew. I wish I had an answer, but I I honestly don't have any idea. They haven't they haven't shared any of that information with okay. with anyone in our group. It's, anyway, it's so I really I really I don't have any information. 
I think a lot of it's still under discussion um, in decision making in the leadership level. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, we once we find out anything, anything we could always let you know. But um, right, yeah, but we're right, we're right, as I mean, curious as everybody yeah. else is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> because I would think that that would be um, a wonderful layer to be able to have available, but at the same time, a bad layer to have available. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and that the, that the data dissemination or, or what's made available to whom, you know, if it's publicly available or, you know, available to a select group of people, that's, that's, that those decisions aren't made by us. That, that goes through that ICS. Um, those are made by leadership. Th thank and you. Group, and the group leaders. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, I've seen some news stories about in the early stages really keeping that quiet for security reasons. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want a whole pile of people showing up that aren't supposed to be, aren't part of the priority list, you know? Right. It could get ugly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. But like I said, I think we're just as curious as everybody else is to uh, Steve, know more about their plan. Uh, Steve, I have a question of, if I may. Um, uh, I think it might be might have been Carla or Dan that mentioned briefly the the use of a vulnerability index uh, as one of the data sources you incorporated into one of the various dashboards that you talked about. Um, could you say a little bit more about that uh, vulnerability index that you might have used or you know, yeah, the, what we used we used one that was developed by the CDC. So there's a there if you go out to their website, they they have a social vulnerability index. It's based on on a number of variables. Um, I can't remember them off the top three or four of them, which dealt with poverty, housing, um, mm -hmm. economic welfare, racial disparity, etc. In that and came in and um, then was mapped based on that. Yeah. And I, I forget if it was mapped by the census tract or whatever. And what it did is it gave you an indicator of, uh, obviously, of whatever the criteria were in sort of a coefficient. Now, what's interesting about that is that a, number, a couple of other counties have taken that and have actually enhanced it and added other variables. So I know specifically that, um, for instance, down in Chicago, they've done it to, to, to better replicate or find other indicators down there. But I know that Hennepin County had spent a, uh, a little bit more time over there um, enhancing that. And, if, and uh, they can talk about that in a little bit more detail um, um, if, you, if you talk to Jesse uh, Reinhardt over there at the Hennepin County GIS group. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I did know about the CDC index. And I just wondered if that's the one that you were referencing. Yeah, that's what we did. I, I actually, Esri helped them develop that whole thing out and, and came up with the variables, et cetera, but they did essentially the whole work. So yeah. they used a lot. We helped organize the data for them. Okay, yep, thank you. So Carla and Chad, this is Corey. I know it's been a while since we've talked, but um, definitely I appreciate the level of collaboration that we've had in the past and other projects and uh, it seems there, there's a renewed uh, drive to do that because as someone that works at the, the municipal city level um, you know like we talked about there's very much that hierarchy so there's a lot of times yeah. that we struggle a lot at the city level because we don't have the resources that the county or state does um, so I'm, I'm very glad to hear that there's this renewed sense of collaboration because let me tell you those of us at the city level we want to collaborate because we need the help <laughs> as much as anybody. Yeah. Um, you know, and one thing that I'd like to mention, like we've been, you know, this came on our radar a while back. I mean, back in like June, but then we had the unfortunate um, civil unrest um, that kind of kicked yeah. in and we just got pretty overwhelmed and like it kind of went on the back burner for a lot of things until we kind of caught up with some other projects um, and just getting right back in pace with everything and that's right where we are right now um where we're actually pushing to get this collaboration and everything kind of put back together i mean you know it's it's a little later than we would we were hoping for but you know it's i you know with the pandemic and everything it's going to be continue to go it's going to be going on for a while um unfortunately 
Um, but, you know, like with the effort that we're trying to put into this, I think that we can actually get something put together, hopefully, pretty soon. So well, I think even even beyond the collaboration, it helps us at the local level because you're simply demonstrating GIS for emergency management. And so the, the emergency management response community becomes more aware um, and therefore will come to uh, any kind of GIS resources that they do have available or uh, emphasize the importance of um, the organization uh, acquiring those resources. So yeah. it's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's all good. It does help us because I'll tell you the number of times I have to keep reintroducing myself to different emergency <laughs> managers. Um, <it's, laughs> man, you would think by, no, by now they would know who I am. But <laughs> I just tell, I'm just like, hey, I'm the idiot in the corner. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> That's <Yeah>. what I say. <laughs> oh, but, you know, like some of the data sets and stuff that you're looking for, I'll tell you that there's a lot of crossover. So the other part of my life is with the crime analysis and intelligence. And there's a lot of that crossover that we've been talking about for collaboration on that side and um, guidelines of how we're using law enforcement data with GIS and accessibility there. So um, I'll make another plug for the priority list because one of the things on the priority list, and I know Steve, you didn't mention this one specifically, but this is about um, a statewide authoritative data set for all licensed businesses across the state uh, to, so that would include your nursing homes, your care facilities, all those things. So basically the things that you're kind of using <laughs> into your map. Um, so that's, that's another thing, like the, the crime analysts need a lot of the same things that emergency management people need. So there's right. another spot where we've got crossover. And, and there have been some discussions on stuff like that and we can talk offline sometime. Um, yeah. But there's been some thoughts about some stuff like that um, for the future, with, like within a hub or something. So. Very cool. As the individual in charge of this event, I would like to point out that it is now 4.03 in the afternoon. So we've officially hit the end of this event. So to the degree that you wish to pop one and continue this discussion, I will, I will leave it running for you to do whatever you wish to do with it. But officially, I would like to once again thank Carla, Dan, and Chad so much for coming in and doing this presentation. It really is a, a, um, a great uh, way to get the word out across the community. I will make this uh, available as a recorded event that'll play through the EPC website so it can be shared with others. So thank you so much. Well, and thanks for everybody for attending. We got we had a really good turnout today. And, and yeah, is, there, um, is there a note taker or anything on this? If we could get some notes. Um... I'm like I gotta hop off. I have another call that I have to pop on to. So I was just kind of curious. Well, it's recorded, Chad. Oh, yep. yeah. I'm a little slow today. <laughs> That's on the young. I'm the young buck. <laughs> Don't worry. You take too long. You'll be the old buck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, guys. I gotta jump off. But you guys have a great day. That was good talking to you guys. Thank you so yeah, much, thank Chad. You, Chad. Thanks, Chad. Thanks for having us. Take care, Thank you, Carl. Carl. Thank you. Thank you.